guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will learn the lexicographical numbers problem which is from lead code number 386 and uh, we will be seeing the most optimal solution in this video. Let's now look at the problem statement. In this problem given an integer and we need to return the numbers in the range of 1 to n in the sorted lexicographical order and we must write an algorithm that runs in order of n time complexity an order of one space complexity okay let's see an example given a number n equals to 13 this is the expected output now the output array should not be considered in the extra space right now let's first see about the lexicographical ordering just to clarify all doubts uh, let's say that a equals to 123 and b equals to 132 now in this case i am writing index from left to right okay from the most significant digit to the least significant digit now the lexicographical ordering is always calculated from left to right and you will see uh, that uh, this 0th position will be uh, compared with the 0th position here they are same so we will compare the next position which is 1 so if they are uh, not matching then whichever one is larger uh, will be the larger string as compared to the other so in this case a will be uh, less than b therefore a must come before b in our answer okay Let's take another example. In this example, C equals to 1, 2, 3 and D equals to 2. So the 0th position item, in this case, uh, 2 is larger than 1. Therefore, C will be smaller than D. Therefore, C must come before D. Even if this D was equals to 1 instead of being 2, uh, then uh, C and D would match at position number 0. But at position number 1, there would be no item and therefore 1 should come before 123. So this is just to clarify uh, your doubts on lexicographical ordering. Once you have understood this, the most important thing in this problem is to learn about the expectation. Okay. So uh, the question expectation can only be understood if you enumerate all the values. Right. So let's take a large enough number which is n equals to 231. Now in this case, if you enumerate all the answers, then you will see that the first answer is 1 then you have 10 then you will have 100 but you will not have 1000 because 1000 will exceed n now after this uh, what you will do is at the least significant digit you will keep iterating the values okay from 0 to 9 after having done this you will again start to the uh, new number 11 right so from 10 you have reached to 11 from 11 uh, you will be going to 110 uh, because we will keep on multiplying by 10 keep appending zeros to the right because that will be lexicographically smaller string and as soon as you hit the wall like after this the next number would have been 1100 which would be outside of the range that's why we didn't go for 1100 and we will keep iterating if you have a look at all these values which i have written then i can generate all this using a recursion tree diagram and once you know the expectation coding uh, will be very simple so let me show you the expectation using a recursion tree diagram. Let's assume that our n value equals to 231, right? So at what number will we start? We wanted to print all the numbers from 1 to n in lexicographical order. And we know that 1 will always be the first number when we uh, try to represent 1 to n. So I will start at 1, okay? So let me define a root node in the recursion tree diagram. And from the root node, I will be uh, making a call to let's say 1. So when I am at 1, what is the next lexicographical number? The next lexicographical number will always be 10, which is uh, computed by multiplying by 10. Okay. And the next lexicographical order uh, number will be 100. You will you, you can check out the example. It will be again multiplication with 10. The next lexicographical number would have been 1000. But you will see that 1000 is outside of range. Therefore, we will backtrack from here. Okay. So currently recorded numbers are 1, 10, 100, right? So from 100, uh, can I go to the next number by multiplying by 10? So this was multiplication by 10 and, and the next number would be multiplication by 10 plus 1. Okay, so in this case, it will be uh, 1001. Definitely, this is not going to work if 1000 didn't work out. Okay, so all the other uh, values will not work out for this 100, right? So I will be backtracking from this 100. What are the recorded numbers till now? The recorded numbers are 1, 10 and 100. Okay. Now when I have backtracked to this 10, then what would be the next number that I can generate? It will be multiplication by 10 plus 1. Okay. 
first you multiply by 10 and add uh, one as a remainder so you can generalize this by adding zero here and adding zero here adding zero here right so when you add a one you will reach to 101 so 101 is the fourth number in the order okay so if you check it out 110 100 and then 101 right so 101 is coming after this can i multiply by 10 and add uh, remainder zero what i will get i will get 10 10 which is 1010 which is outside of the range of n definitely this is not going to work so definitely all the other child of 101 are not going to work because that would be multiplication by 10 plus 1 plus 2 and so on right so those all numbers will not be working so 101 is the fourth number now i will be backtracking to this 10 and i will make a new call and that new call will be multiplication by 10 plus 2 okay and that will be 102 yes you can check out that in our uh, result 102 was the next number right after 101 so this is our fifth number after this uh, if i try to make again a dfs call in the recursion tree then I will be making multiplication by 10 and adding 0. That will make it to 1020, which is 1020. Definitely, this is outside of range. I'll go back and all the further calls doesn't make any sense. So I will be going back from 102. And similarly, I can make other calls. And the last call which I make will be to 109. And this can be achieved by multiplying by 10 and adding 9 as the remainder to it. Okay. So 109. And if you make further calls from 109, definitely that is going to be out of bounds. So no meaning in making that call. You can just go back. So you see that I have shown you the recursion tree diagram starting at 10. Okay. So after 110, uh, you see all these numbers are being generated. And I have shown you till this point, till 109, right? After this, what happens is uh, your control will go back. So your control will be back to this one. And what is the next number that gets generated? You know it. It will be multiplication by 10 and add 1 as a remainder. So that will make it 11, right? So when it is 11, you will see that after having generated 109, the next number is 11 in line, right? So that is how we can generate this number 11. Again, follow the same process. Multiply by 10 and add a remainder 0 initially. That will make it 110. You see that 110 is the next number. Now, if you again multiply by 10 and add remainder 0, it will be 1100, which is 1100 outside of bounds. So go back to 110. Again, if you make further calls, there is no meaning in making that because it will definitely be out of bounds. So go back to 11. Once you are back to 11, again, you can multiply by 10 and add 1 as a remainder. In this case, you will get 111. So this is the next number after 110. You see, 111 is the next number after 110. Okay. And like this, you keep on iterating, you will get 119, right? You check it out, you get 119. So, uh, you can just keep on repeating this again, your control will go back to 1 and the next number generated will be 12. And like this, the next, uh, the last number to be generated will be 19. Starting with 1, the last number would be 19. Now, I have generated all possible numbers starting with 1. So, what would be the next call? Uh, the next recursion call will generate all possible numbers starting with 2. And again, you have to repeat the same process. What we need to do is again with 2, first you will multiply by 10 and add 1. So 2 is the next number in line. So in the list, I have not written down 2. It will come later. So 2 will be the number that that is the first number starting with 2. Okay. If you multiply by 10 and add a remainder 0 to it, then it will become 20. So 20 will also be recorded after 2. If you multiply by 10 and add remainder 0 to it, it will become 200, right? So 200 will also get recorded. Now, if you again multiply by 10 and add remainder 0, it will be 2000, which is out of bounds. So definitely you need to backtrack, right? Similarly, you follow all the process. Any further call will not make any sense. It will be out of bounds. Backtrack to 20. Next number will be 201, multiplying by 10 and adding remainder 1. So whenever uh, you go out of bounds, like you will make a call with starting with 21, starting with 22, but as soon as you get to starting with 23, uh, it, there will be a limit to it and you cannot make further calls starting with 24. You will backtrack to 2, you will backtrack. Okay. So this is the recursion tree diagram. Now, if you were following my steps of understanding the expectation, writing it down in the notebook and then making the recursion tree diagram, it will be very much easier for you to write the code now. Okay. So in this case, what will be the depth of recursion? The depth of recursion will be equals to the number of digits. If you look at the problem statement, 
uh, then they have mentioned about uh, the number being 5 into 10 to the power of 4 which is five digit number right so in every depth when i go from level 1 to level 2 the number of digits are continuously increasing by one so the depth of this entire tree will be no more than five okay so the depth will always be less than equals to five and you know that the space complexity of the recursion call stack will be equals to the depth of the uh, recursion tree diagram right so the depth is a constant which is very small number d less than equals to five therefore i can assume a constant space here and uh, what will be the time complexity i am generating all the numbers by iterating over each and every number right so it will be order of n therefore the time complexity will be order of n and the space complexity will be order of one let's now look at the code implementation i would like to announce about our live training programs data structures and algorithms which is interview dose and system design which is design dose if you are looking for making a switch from service to product based or even make a product based to product based top tier switch and aiming for your dream company this is the best curriculum you can ever join i'll be your mentor throughout the cohort and i will help you clear all your doubts in the one on one sessions you can know more about this by querying us on the whatsapp number or you can also visit our website techdose.co.in this is the test case which i had taken which is a uh, 231 and you can see i have enumerated all the numbers you can also do the same and check out what are the outputs this will help you analyze the question better right once you have done that uh, then this is like a very simple recursion code in this case i have taken an answer which will contain all the numbers and uh, i will start iterating like first i will uh, assume something like as a root node and then from there i will start iterating from 1 2 and so on till 9 okay all the numbers and then i will make a dfs call and i will uh, uh, send the current number which is i and then i will uh, send the limit which we should not cross definitely and then the answer will store all the uh, valid integers that we have generated okay so in this case if the current number is outside of bound just return back and uh, if it is a valid number just uh, save it into our answer and definitely all the uh, digits here that we are seeing at line number seven i mean in the dfs call is not the most significant digit because the most significant digit have been generated at line 13 fine all the other digits being generated in the dfs call are not the most significant digit so what i am doing is i am multiplying by 10 and adding the remainder to it to generate the entire recursion tree diagram as i had shown you right so i hope you were able to understand it there is another solution which is the same time complexity but uh, linear uh, space complexity uh, this is the try code and i generally uh, prefer solving questions like this with try uh, because that is where i am biased so i will be providing both the codes uh, in the description section you can just check it out i hope you were able to understand this if you have any doubt then please comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of these programming videos see you guys in the next video thank you